live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering OpenStack Summit 2017. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, and additional ecosystem support. Hi, and welcome back to SiliconANGLE TV's production of theCUBE here at OpenStack Summit 2017 in Boston. I'm Stu Miniman, joined with my co-host for the week, John Troyer, as you can see behind us, uh, the day two keynotes letting out. Uh, John, it's always interesting to look at these shows. Uh, they had some demos that were awesome, a couple of demos where the demo gods were not smi smiling on them. Uh, they had Edward Snowden live via Q&A. Uh, they had Brian Stevens, who we're going to be talking with a little bit, the CTO of Google, who was on the early starts. Um, for me, they're a little up and down. There's some of the vendor pitches uh, in there. People are like, oh, I have a great demo, and then you say, come to my booth and see a bunch of my sessions. So a little bit uneven and disjointed, which has been some of the feedback you get about OpenStack in general uh, over the last few years as to all those pieces come together. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so what are your early thoughts coming out of the day two keynote? Well, it was definitely uh, you know, a keynote focused at the OpenStack community. Uh, we started off with open source and talking about the importance of open source, which is a, a little bit odd because everyone here knows that. I, I did like the message that uh, OpenStack uh, was composed of different projects, that it was a piece of the puzzle, not the whole puzzle. Uh, you and I both noted, uh, uh, VMware Scott Lowe tweeted, you know, it's good to see the OpenStack Foundation talking about being a part of the overall solution, not the overall solution. I mean, as one example, they mentioned using using etcd, which is a distributed key value store, yep. instead of writing their own. Uh, etcd powers Kubernetes. You would be insane in 2017 to rewrite a distributed key value st pair, uh, store at this point, because it's just out there, it's mature. You know, OpenStack has been around for seven years. There's been a lot of ecosystem grown up around them. Yeah, uh, yeah, a couple of pieces on that. One is, there was a message about like, oh, I can now take the individual components of OpenStack, I could actually do that before. I've noted, I've talked to a number of software companies that when you dig down into what they're doing, oh, what do you know? There's, you know, there's Cinder, or there's, you know, something in there, just as uh, when I use AWS, I can use some of the individual components. Same things with OpenStack. It's not a monolith. Uh, there are the individual pieces, but they're highlighting that a little bit more. They're saying we can use some of the pieces. On um, the other thing, on the open source in general, um, they noted that, like, in the, artificial intelligence and machine learning space, like everyone that you see is using open source. Everything from you know, Google and TensorFlow uh, is one uh, that gets highlighted a lot. Uh, Amazon uh, ma made a big push at their show about what they're doing with uh, you know, some of the machine learning. Uh, I, I can't remember right now the, the, the program on there, but right, in some of these emerging spaces, open source is the de facto way to do that. We had in one of the conversations we had yesterday with one of the Cisco distinguished engineers, you know, used to be standards, now open source really drives a lot of that. Um, I actually got a, a quick conversation with Martin Casado, who had, you know, worked on a lot of open source things uh, before VMware acquired him, uh, and now is at Andreessen Horowitz looking at all the open source models. So, uh, unfortunately, yeah, Martin had enough time to come on the program, but we've had him on many times. Uh, yeah, so well, Stu, I, I have a that. question. Yeah. The, the message today of being part of an ecosystem and being a, compo being a componentized open source uh, set of projects, does that uh, detract or add to this conversation around OpenStack Core versus Big Tent? Uh, I think Big Tent is dying. We, 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 we talked to uh, a number of the participants yesterday and said it was a little overblown. Um, it does not mean that some pieces might still get worked on, but it's the core components and you know, when we dug into the survey, it's how many of the pieces do we really need? We want to make sure the core works, I can have that distribution if I want to do what is OpenStack. Um, when they highlighted those components, it wasn't, you know, 27 different projects there. Uh, I, I, you know, I think it was a handful of like six yeah. uh, that, that, that were there. So, you know, Swift and Cinder, um, some interesting, cool little graphics. Uh, there was ironic, I tell you, uh, the little graphic there, that was like a scary looking bear. It's like I wouldn't want to run into him in a cartoon alley. Uh, but <laughs> Yeah, I did tweet, yeah, there was a, an angry bear, kind of a poisonous spider, and a, and a horse is behind. So I'm not quite sure about the marketing there. But What is the message they're sending? But they're, 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 there's some fun. Uh, we've got, you know, Mark Collier and Jonathan Bryce coming on soon. We can ask them, you know, was this the community, and are there just some people uh, that have uh, a funny sense of humor, and this is how they show it. I did love the demos uh, in, in today's uh, talk, uh, uh, Stu. The, I especially like the, they spun up live on stage, 15 uh, from scratch OpenStack clouds, 
and then uh, had them all join a, a cockroach DB uh, cluster. I thought that was kind of cool and amazing. Yeah, absolutely. You talk about that hybrid multi-cloud world, showing it, you know, in reality how that works. Uh, Pretty neat, and you know you can actually see some applicability as to how that would fit in a customer environment. And kudos to all the people. I mean, these were live, no net demos, not Camtasia, not some pre-recorded things. Because it's like, oh wait, this this thing's not quite ready to be able to be bootable, or you know, let let me come in. I mean, they're 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 up there on stage doing it. The Wi-Fi all seemed to work fine. That wasn't the challenge, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it it was pretty cool. Well, again, uh, trying to give the message that OpenStack is indeed not a science project, that it's live, that it's configurable, that it's stable, that it's installable, uh, and I think that kind of message of stability and configurability uh, uh, and non-simplicity, maybe, is one of the ones they're trying to hit here today. Yeah, uh, last thing I want to hit on, John, is I want to get your opinion. We throw out the term open a bunch, and I'm watching some of the other industry things, and they say open when they mean choice as opposed to open as in open source. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we see Google here and Google talks about open. Um, so many things that are now open source, a lot of times started out as a Google white paper or something as we all say, we're all using open source what Google was using 10 years ago, right? <laughs> you know, MapReduce and Borg and, uh, you know, Spanner and some of those things eventually get their way out. Um, yeah, I've got some viewpoints on this, but love to get your take first. Yeah. Well, I mean, definitely it was a, it was an homage to open source this morning. In some ways, it was kind of a dig at, at AWS and Amazon, which uses a lot of open source tools but does not share back. Um, you know, OpenStack is clearly open source, and and they were emphasizing that. I don't know. It was your. Uh, what are your thoughts, Tim? Yeah, it's customers. Now, it used to be, you said open source, you know, if we go back 10, 15 years and it was like, ooh, no. Now, open source is a lot of times a, a plus, a something that they're asking for. Many companies are contributing and engaging uh, in that. OpenStack is a great example of companies that have participated, uh, you know, in helping to build OpenStack. Um, that being said, you know, I always go to, you know, what's the problem to be solved? What's the solution that solves it? And if it happens to be a little bit pre-standard or not 100% open source, um, most companies are fine with that. We were at Red Hat Summit last week with theCUBE though, and everything they do is 100% open source. They're building their business. Their customers are really happy. Uh, so, you know, open source still has a little bit of a double-edged sword as to how you do it, but, uh, you know, open source, absolutely. There's no question of if open source, it's how much and to what extent and where it fits. Sure, there is an ecosystem of providers here. There's always lock-in when you make a technical choice. But in this case, I think they've successfully, we're trying to show off that you know, th that there are, th there is a choice of clouds, this is, there is an open, uh, a set of open source components that you can mix and match, and so the, that, that actually uh, ties in very well to uh, the interview with Edward Snowden. Yeah, uh, absolutely, uh, yeah, it was, uh, in the last point, Edward Snowden, uh, towards the end he said, fear is, I, I think the quote was, the most powerful weapon, you know, in, in the world today, from a political sta statement is what he's doing, Fear and IT is a powerful weapon. Uh, we know that you know enterprise and inertia, you know, tend to go together. Uh, with my background in networking, I used to draw these timelines and say, from when the time the standard was done to when you know the early majority adopt is oftentimes a decade. So the technology adoption, moving the operational, we know the people piece is always uh, tough to do. Moving my applications. Uh, we think people are definitely moving faster, but fear is definitely something that holds them back. Uh, what, what, what do you see, John? Sure, I think the through line of the whole morning was about choice and diversity. Uh, Edward Snowden talked about uh, the centralization of information services like Facebook, Google, uh, and, and Twitter, and I, think, um, and, and I think by implication Amazon. And I think uh, the message that he was giving to the OpenStack crowd was, look, you are enabling a multitude of services and a multitude of clouds, and that actually is a lever, a cultural lever against the over-centralization of uh, commercial forces, which are a little bit outside people's control. Yeah, so uh, John, thanks for helping me uh, wrap up day one. As always, we welcome our audience to please send us feedback. Uh, John and I are both pretty active on Twitter, very easy to get in touch with. Uh, we are at so many shows, if you check out SiliconANGLE TV, see where we're at. If we're not at a show that you think we should be at, 
reach, there's contact information at the top. Uh, if there's guests that we should have on our program, we're always looking for feedback. Love to get, especially those end user stories, uh, talk about with interesting startups. So we've got two more days of live coverage. So for John and myself, stay with us, and thanks as always for watching theCUBE.